when I was walking around yesterday, um, a lot of the themes came out uh, in speaking with you guys about taking these large systems and trying to break them down. It was interesting to, to hear all the different stories about that. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, Home Depot has been working on this for a little while, and we've actually been uh, um, using evolutionary architecture to help us with that. So as I mentioned, my name is Christopher Grant. I am a senior architect at, at HomeDepot.com. You can find me online at C. Grant. Um, I've been uh, in the industry for about 20 years now. And uh, uh, interestingly, uh, so has uh, the HomeDepot.com site. So this is our awesome site back in 1996. This was state of the art at the time. I think we even had image maps on the uh, store finder app there. So this is actually how a lot of the uh, uh, systems start these days, right? So, so you start out with something small, lean, and mean. And then over time, you, you add features and functions into it. And then you end up with something that's a little bit bigger, a little bit more difficult to manage. It was the same way with the Home Depot.com site. So in 2011, we had this you know, two gig deploy, uh, took over an hour. We had three month long release cycles. We really didn't have any CI or testing, uh, automated testing involved. And we, we actually had a you know, two to four hour uh, outage when we wanted to deploy. So this is definitely something that was gonna uh, challenge us uh, going forward. So we took, we took a note of that and we said, hey, how are we gonna change this? We wanna do things. Well, the first thing for us was really to take a look at what our, our key objectives were. So we knew we had a lot of things in the horizon. We wanted to increase the rate of change. We wanted to bring in a whole lot of new developers, but we had to maintain that one billion in sales that we were making at the time. So we started with uh, Agile. So we changed our, our process. So we were doing waterfall methodology previously, and Agile was actually new to the organization. So uh, switching from those three-month release cycles with blocks of time for testing and trying to push for those weekly deploys was, was a, an initial challenge. But we worked with the teams, we, we educated people on that, and it worked out well. So now we had a process down. We had to actually work on how do you break this up technically. So we looked at our, our big monolith. We said, hey, what are, the, what are the main pieces here? And we found that there's kind of this e-commerce side and there's kind of this browse and catalog shopping side. And so we decided that we were going to start out with the browse side. And we, we decomposed that even further. And we said, hey, we've got store finder again, and we've got the product pages search and catalog pages, all these different things. So we kind of took them piece by piece, and we piloted one of them. Uh, and once we learned some lessons from that, we moved on. And we did this across all of the, uh, all of the different applications. So the next piece is now that we're ready to get started, what are we going to do? We, we needed to really check on our our automation, right? So we, in, we, we uh, in, installed continuous integration, you know, Sonar, Jenkins, Nexus, all of these tools, you know, really, you know, bake in our quality. So the automation was key at the time. We added automated testing and unit testing, all the rest of that. But we also wanted to take account what was going to happen in the future. So, so we were in the middle of an initiative right now. We were managing day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations, trying to do something new. And we knew things were going to happen in the future that we weren't ready for. So we decided that we were going to architect for that. So we implemented APIs. We abstracted out a uh, front end from the back end. And this was actually really, really helpful for us for some specific changes that we knew were coming, as well as uh, things that, that turned up later that we didn't have, a, have an, uh, a clue about. All right. So here we are. We've got you know, our APIs. We're ready to go. But the operations team is asking us, how do we roll this out you know, safely? 